Hi, my name is Lucien Peron, ISP <coughs> ATCP. I'm a member of the Ontario uh, Board of uh, the Canadian Information Processing Society. We're here today in May uh, 2016 to talk about uh, IT professionalism and why it is important uh, for Canada. I have uh, uh, with me uh, Bashir Fancy, who is the chairman for the Canadian Information Processing Society, and I'm going to be asking him some questions. Bashir, if you don't mind then introducing yourself. So that Very briefly, uh, my name is Bashir Fancy. I am the Vice President of KIPS Ontario, and I'm also the Chairman for the National Board of Canadian Information Processing Society, in short, KIPS. Thank you, Bashir. Tell us about KIPS. Tell us why uh, KIPS uh, is, uh, we're talking about KIPS today. The reason we're talking about KIPS today, uh, we are in May 2016, and May is more relevant from the standpoint that Canadian Information Processing Society was formed 58 years ago, basically in 1958 by Mr. Gottlieb, who is otherwise known as father of computing in Canada and in fact uh, also received the Order of Canada. So you're talking about a person with a very good foresight back then too uh, to take us forward. And today we are now looking at how we take it forward into the next century. That's very good. Thank you, Bashir. I think that, that uh, illustrates the point and what the idea of this association is for. Tell us then what is professionalism uh, in, in information technology. Thank you, Lucia. There's two parts to this. There's the profession and there's the professional. So the profession is Canadian Information Processing Society where you have a code of ethics, a standard uh, to ensure that people meet a certain bar and then we have a lot of programs supporting the other side, which is the professionalism. You as a professional have, in a sense, attained a certain amount of education at university, then you come into the companies. But that's fantastic. You now need to continue to enhance those skills because we're dealing in a ch world of fast-paced technology changes. Businesses are changing. Disruptive technologies are changing. So the only way to do it is to continue to stay on top just because you were able to handle certain things yesterday will not help you tomorrow unless you stay on top. So I think that's where we are now. Thanks. Uh, in your response, you alluded a little bit about universities. If you don't mind, then uh, talk to us about the relationship <coughs> with universities and the association. Thank you. That's a very good question. We have actually a program where we accredit uh, universities across Canada to actually teach the IT programs. Um, and so we have very good relationship. We're now enhancing that and in fact trying to come out with a designation which will, um, and it's already there, but we are doing it slightly differently now. So we work with people like Queen's University and we are working now with Sheridan and many others to try and come up with this part whereby two things happen. Not only the fact that when they're getting educated, they can start to participate in Canadian Information Process Society with the events that we hold so that not only are they getting the, the education in the universities, but they're also starting to find out what is happening elsewhere in the world. And so we can start to prepare them when they get into, uh, they qualify, they have a designation from uh, us which says that they've attained a certain standard, but they're missing the hours, which they will get by working in a professional environment that we would then validate and they start to get into the fold. So what you're saying is, and that response to summarize it is that you have any professional has been involved with the association from early on in their career. That's fantastic. So we're celebrating again IT Professionalism Week. Uh, and uh, again, uh, the universities have done a terrific job in training or providing the fundamentals for the future, pr future professionals. Uh, in your opinion and your experience, uh, what is not working today? That's actually a very good question. So why don't I start with a little story of uh, Stanford University, where they put five monkeys in a control uh, and you know fitted with sprinkler systems and basically put bananas up there. And of course, the monkeys, the, especially the go-getter, charged up to get them the bananas. For let it go for a few days, it has become a normal process. Then they started opening hot water on the monkeys when they went to touch the bananas. The minute they went up, the hot water came down. It took three, four days for the monkeys to realize and connect those two things that every time this guy goes up to get the banana, 
they're getting flooded with warm water or hot water to make it uncomfortable not to kill them. They changed one monkey each day to see what behavior pattern would change. And what continued, that continued. But then they also stopped the sprinkler system to make sure that they can now understand how the, the behavior pattern would change. Ironically, in spite of the fact that now the sprinkler system had been shut down and they had changed every single monkey in there, every time a monkey would go up to get the bananas, the rest of them would pull them down and beat them up because they didn't want to get kind of initially, the problem was that they were getting flooded with hot water. Now here's the problem and it kind of talks to human behavior which is very relevant in how our business is operating. And so what is that? That's that they, the reason for pulling the monkey down was because they were getting in hot water. That was the why. The what was that they were beating somebody up to stop that from happening. Now when the problem changed and there's no more sprinkler system, hot water coming down, why were they pulling the other monkey down and beating him up? Because that was a process that they understood. Now how do I link it to the business? That's exactly how we operate in the business. If you really look at the stuff, you look at how we do, whether it's IT, whether it's operations and marketing, we do what we have learned to do for a long time, right? Which is, we keep repeating the process. You go into any company and ask them, why do you do this? And they'll tell you, this is the process. This is how we do it. But they can't answer the question why, or majority of them can't. That's the problem right there. So when you ask, what is the problem? The problem is that we keep repeating the same thing and we look for different results and that's the definition of insanity. That if you keep doing the repeat the same things and then you still expect some different outcome, it's not going to happen. Meanwhile, we now have disruptive technologies coming from outside. It doesn't matter whether you're a banking in the payment field, whether you are operations, your telephone company, whoever you are or your retail. What is happening is the businesses around us are changing. Disruptive technology is forcing that quite fast. Today, you have more firepower in your smartphone than we had in mainframes back then. So the question is, is it good enough to say I was able to do this 30 years ago and I did very well? Is it going to keep me alive tomorrow? And the answer is no. We need to change. In order to do that, you need to upgrade your skills. You need to, uh, that really brings it down to professionalism understanding things outside your comfort zone, which means that you better understand not just your area. I mean, you could be very good at technology. If you don't understand the business, you can't take advantage of it. If you understand the business and don't understand technology, you're back in the same place. <clears throat> so it is important that you start to understand that, you know, it's basically now you need to take a step back and start to look at how do you do things differently. I mean, if you really look at, I've seen examples, I won't go into too many details, but we've seen examples of processes that are continuing in businesses that have no business being there because the problem has gone, it has changed, and yet we continue to do that. It's very expensive. Then it becomes very difficult for you to compete with people out there. We have standards we have set up for different, for, like for professionalism, but similarly, for different businesses, I can give you a quick example of PCI or AIS DSS. The standard was done to avoid the data breaches and prevent fraud. That's the fundamental because it's costing a lot of money. Is that how we are operating today? No, we are operating with a checklist to tick boxes off to save you. But that doesn't address the fact that the risks have changed and continue to change every day. So unless you take a step back and start to do things differently, you are asking for trouble. And that is the key. Now, one other thing I mentioned about professionalism. In professionalism, there's a quote that I can actually uh, recite here. It won't be verbatim because I don't have it in front of me. It comes from Sandra Day Connor, who was the Chief Justice uh, in the United States. And she said professionalism to her is doing things to the best of your ability with the best skills, with the highest amount of ethics and integrity. That's the first part of the statement. The second part of the statement says that you will forsake your own narrow personal interest in the interest of the organization or the greater public. Now that's very powerful when you think about it and follow it up with this little statement that says it's about 
doing things right and doing the right things. And these are not always written down in the law. Remember, there's a personal responsibility outside a contract you may sign. And there is an unsigned contract, and that comes from professionalism. And it's about ethics, integrity, doing the things to the best of your ability. There are a lot of things that you might do that are not written down, but you must do as a professional if you're going to achieve. And that's going to enable you to actually excel and do things better. And in fact, organizations will benefit. You will benefit because there are better jobs for you. There is the jobs getting done with the higher skill. The ferial rate is low. And, uh, you know, overall, everybody is winning in this particular approach. Now, Bashir, I'm going to ask you somewhat of a loaded question. Uh, one of the elements that characterize professionalism is that you want professionals to advance the profession <coughs> or the industry. Based on your experience, tell us about what makes uh, or what sets a professional uh, individual or a professional organization apart from the other. So that's a, actually a very good question, loaded it is, but I will use some examples of real life to actually uh, answer that question. We have already discussed that for a professional, you have the skill sets must be relevant, it must be updated all the time, it can't be what I knew 30 years ago, but what I know today and what risks that are being posed to me for tomorrow. So as a professional with ethics, integrity, my professional conduct, and making sure that I watch where things are going in the world every day, which means I assess the risks that are posed. So let, as an example, uh, to give you a real example, as you are aware, I was the global head of internal audit for Visa, but I was also the executive vice president and head of risk management and security. So fraud problems for us have been massive around the world. And so we had to come out with the standard AIS DSS, or you know it as PSI, PCI DSS. So what was the purpose of the standard? The purpose of the standard was to stop data breaches so that we don't leak that information, which is not only personally identifiable information, but it can be used quite damagingly to create fraud problems. And every dollar of fraud costs us $10. So every $1, $10 fraud, uh, $10 of cost, uh, which, by the way, people don't see because it's not on your balance sheet or financial statement. It's buried on different budgets. So people don't necessarily see that and they don't think it's a problem, but it's a big problem. Now, when you talk about that, we talk about when we talk about risk management and security, security fraud problems are a big issue, which means the data is getting compromised. So in my role, I look at that and I go, one of the threat is the insider threat, right? 90% or more these days are actually coming from inside. What I do recall, and I work with these people even now, is that organized, organized crime has infiltrated a lot of these big, large organizations. So they can do this thing because it's very lucrative. Remember, they're not going to give up the business because they make very good money out of this. So now, one such technology that I saw as a professional, Gen2, for example, right? So what do they bring to the table that as a professional, I am literally obligated to look at it? Because for my organization, as a professional, you want to do the best for your organization, for yourself, but for your organization. Here's a technology that actually made sure that rather than drives in your PC, there were servers at the back which ran applications and your data. So if your computer was stolen or if somebody came in after hours or any other time, you can't get to the information because remember, data by itself doesn't move. It's the applications that makes uh, do something. And when I saw that, and in fact, I'm testing the system out, I'm saying this is pretty impressive. It can save you a lot of money on operations because now you're patching your fact that drive failures cost a lot of money. You have enhanced the security because what has happened is you got in one place is a hell of a lot easier to protect information when it's one place than it's floating all, over, all around. Because how many people are you going to control? Because PCs are stolen, lost, accessed by different people, passwords given to people, which we know happens in companies. So as a professional, I'm looking and saying, ah, I have a different technology that actually can not only lower my cost. I can't think about the fact that, oops, it's going to cut my job or I might be forced to reduce one other person here. That is not professional because now ethics and integrity demand that I do the right thing. The right thing, in fact, is to seriously look at this type of solution 
even if it means I am doing myself out of a job to a certain extent, but you're really not doing yourself out of a job because these are the type of people companies want where they will bring you the best solution, they will bring you the most security because we're dealing now where you've got state players actually involved in fraud. So it is very important that you take a step back. It's just an example of what a professional can do and he can do a lot more. But I have always maintained one thing and I will make that statement here is that compliance does not equal to security. Absolutely, compliance does not equal to security. It is security that will actually lead to compliance and overall protect your business. So for those who are worried about compliance, I'm saying worry about uh, you know the security because, and this is where organization like KIPS comes in because we turn around and promote the fact that professionalism, ethics, integrity is key. The reason I can talk about it and do that because this is how I conduct myself. It's all about the organization, about the greater picture, not about me. And I think that's kind of the knowledge, knowledge we share with people. We certainly, uh, there is an education aspect we talked about, but this comes from networking, mentoring, and upgrading the skills, always going outside your comfort zone because if you don't do that, you risk uh, that part. So I, I hope anybody who wants to know more about us, me, Lucia, the organization, how we do, please go to www.kips.ca and there's a lot more information and hopefully we can be of service to you in one form or the other and it'll be our pleasure. So thank you for, for uh, taking time to listen to this. Thank you, Bashir, for sharing your uh, knowledge and experience with us. Thank you all of, of you for attending and listening to this video. All the information that is relevant to you will be available uh, as part of the video as well. And if you have any more questions, again, feel free to reach out to us and we will be happy to continue the conversation. Thank you.